guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one that has been highly requested and that is how to start your very own publishing company. This is something that I did as a self-publisher. I am the owner and president of Black Falcon Press, which is my publishing company. I want to share my experiences with you and give you a step-by-step -step guide in case you're thinking about starting your own publishing company. Quick disclaimer though, this video is for informational purposes only. I am not an accountant or a lawyer and I am not giving legal advice. Before making any business decisions, it is recommended that you consult with a tax professional and a lawyer. With that out of the way, first, let's get into why it's a good idea to create your own publishing company. And make sure to stay tuned at the end of this video because I'll be doing my drawing for the three winners for my 1K giveaway. And yes, this is what a thousand pieces of paper looks like in a jar. <laughs> so the pros of setting up a publishing company are, number one, professionalism. With your own publishing company, you can register the ISBN with your company name as the publisher. This will show up on your book sales page and it will look more professional than having create space or your name listed as the publisher. Also, if you're wanting to use Ingram Spark, it's required that you sign up as a publisher and not an individual. Just something to keep in mind. Number two, separation of church and state. By this, I mean that having a publishing company separates your book publishing activities from your personal income and assets. It can be helpful to have your business and personal finances separate for tax purposes. There are even times when it can save you money. Also, if you decide to form an LLC or an S corporation, more about those in a little, these companies shield your personal income and assets from lawsuits that may occur. While lawsuits are pretty rare in this line of business, it's nice to have that extra layer of protection in place just in case. And number three, options galore. Once you have your own publishing company, the sky is the limit. Down the road, you may decide that you want to offer your services to the public. You can offer not only publishing services where you offer to publish other authors' books, which, hint hint, is something I'm thinking of maybe doing in the future, but you can also offer editing, revision, and marketing services. It's your business, you can make it whatever you want it to be. Okay, so if all this sounds fine and dandy, and you've decided that you do want to start your very own publishing company, then you should follow these seven steps. Number one, research your options. It's important to know what options are available in your country. Since I live in the United States, this video is going to be about setting up a business in the United States. There are three main options to choose from in the States. A sole proprietorship, an LLC, which is also a limited liability company, and an S corporation. So let's define what these three are. A sole proprietorship is an unincorporated business that you run yourself. You would claim this under your social security number for taxes. This is honestly the easiest way to start a publishing company. An LLC is a limited liability company, and this is actually the one that I chose for Black Falcon Press, and it is taxed similarly to a sole proprietorship. However, an LLC is an incorporated business and separates and protects your personal assets from your business assets under, you guessed it, limited liability. An S corporation is an incorporated business and it gives more tax advantages and savings. Number two, decide on a name for your publishing company. Once you've decided on the type of business that you're going to set up, either a sole proprietorship, an LLC, or an S corporation, you need to choose a name for your publishing company. You must make sure that the name that you've decided on is not trademarked or already taken in your state. Also, make sure to choose a business name that is professional and fits your brand. Don't rush this step because your business name is going to stick with you for a long time, so you wanna pick a good one. Number three, finalize the business type and file the paperwork. Now that you've chosen a name for your publishing company, you need to finalize the setup and file the paperwork. The most fun step of all. This step is somewhat difficult for me to explain because the filing process varies from state to state. So I'm going to tell you how I did it here in Texas because Texas is where my publishing company is set up. Really, all I did was Google how to start an LLC in Texas. LegalZoom was one of the first websites that popped up and I had seen commercials on TV, so I figured I'd go ahead and click on it and check it out just to see how much this was actually going to cost. I answered all the questions and finally got to the pricing page and holy cow. So first of all, just to file 
for a new business for an LLC in the state of Texas, it costs $300. But because LegalZoom is a third party service who's going to do all of the filing on your behalf, they make you choose from three different packages. Economy, which is $149 plus the $300 filing fee. Standard, which is $289 plus the $300 filing fee. Or Express Gold, which is $359 plus the $300 filing fee. Now, I was willing to spend $300 to set up my publishing company, but I was not willing to spend $450 to $660. I knew there had to be another way, so I googled again. By going to the Texas Secretary of State SOS Direct website, I was able to do all my paperwork and file my certificate online, and it only cost me $300. And on this website, I was even able to search other company names to make sure that no one already had Black Falcon Press set up as a publishing company or another company. Bingo! So moral of the story here is do your research and be patient about finding the best way to file your paperwork. I recommend going to the Secretary of State's website for whichever state you live in to research and truly understand what it's going to cost you to start your publishing company. Don't jump the gun and just use a service like LegalZoom because I promise you, you'll figure it out and it'll save you a lot of money in the end. Number four, set up your business bank account. It only took 48 to 72 hours for my publishing company to be approved. Again, this is in Texas, so it might differ for whatever state you live in. And I was emailed a certificate right away with my EIN, which is employee identification number. I was told that the signed certificate was in the mail and should arrive within five to seven business days. Once you have your EIN, you can actually apply for a business bank account. I personally bank through Wells Fargo, but I set up my business bank account through Chase. Each bank has a different process and requirements for setting up a business bank account, so you'll need to consult with your local bank for more details. I will say that Chase was super easy. I literally went online found the checking account for business option, filled everything out online. I didn't even have to go into the branch and they sent me everything through the mail and it was just literally the easiest process of my whole entire life. So if you bank with Chase or you've never banked with them before like me, I would recommend them because they were great and the process was seamless. Just throwing it out there. I also recommend setting up a PayPal business account for online transactions, especially if you're going to offer and sell signed copies of your book. You can use PayPal to send electronic invoices and receive payment directly into your business bank account. Number five, set up an accounting system. I wouldn't worry about this too much in the beginning, especially if you've only published one or two books, but as you start publishing more and earning higher revenues, you'll need to have an accounting system in place so that you're not running around with your hair on fire when tax season rears its ugly head. I recommend buying the cheapest version of QuickBooks. And since this isn't a QuickBooks tutorial, you'll have to follow the instructions that come with the software or find a different YouTube video on how to use that. Also, it's important that you implement a system for tracking your receipts. Never buy personal items with a business account and vice versa. You want to be organized and keep this separate. Number six, register a domain name for your business. Every company has a website nowadays, so it is critical that you make one for your publishing company. Make sure you register a domain name for your business. Domain names are the .coms, .nets, .orgs, .infos, etc. By this, I mean that I've registered blackfalconpress.com, blackfalconpress.net, .info, and .org. You can do this through domain registrars like GoDaddy or One in One Domain. Each domain name costs between $12.99 to $17.99 per year, but it's well worth it to pay for all of them so that you don't have someone come and register under blackfalconpress.net, and I only have blackfalconpress.com. And you can actually have the .net, .info, and .org. If someone types that in, you can have it redirect it to your main website, which mine would be blackfalconpress.com. So it's worth the money to go ahead and just pay for all of them redirect them so it goes to your main website and that way you don't have to worry about anyone stealing your domain name. Number seven, learn the laws related to publishing companies. Make sure you learn the laws related to your business. For example, in the United States, there are laws about collecting sales tax when you sell books at live events and it differs from state to state. I actually just experienced this at LeviosaCon in Nevada. You may also need to register for a sales tax license in your state and or city. Again, your state's Secretary of State website should be the first place you go to to do research and get all this information. So there you have it, seven steps to help you start your very own publishing company. One quick thing I did want to mention is that if you are kind of on edge or a little nervous about starting a publishing company because you're afraid that you might owe too much come tax time, don't fret. 
you have to sell quite a few books before you actually even get taxed. And this normally doesn't happen to self-published authors who have one, two, or even three books under their belt. But if it's still a concern, make sure that you visit the Small Business Administration website at sba.gov. I'll put the link right here for you guys as well as leave it down below in the description. They explain everything really well and will hopefully ease your mind a little when it comes to starting a company and paying taxes. I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did, please thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Just a couple of weeks ago, I reached 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Thank you guys. And I promised that I would do my 1K giveaway video in mid-August, so here it is. I am going to draw three names out of this jar because a thousand pieces of paper would not fit in a hat. <laughs> and those three winners will get to choose from the following prizes. Number one, a signed copy of The Alpha Drive. Number two, a $15 Amazon gift card. And number three, a first chapter critique. Don't worry if you don't have your first chapter ready yet or if it's not written. That prize doesn't expire. It can be three years from now and you can email me and say, hey, you remember your 1K giveaway? And I won this and you know, we'll make it work and I'll do the critique for you. So there is no expiration date on the critique. So without further ado, the winners are, actually, you know what? We're gonna shake this up. This is why I did it in a jar because I wanted, I feel like I'm making a margarita or a martini. All right. Winner number one. Let's get this all good in here. Okay. Freda Cervantes. And I'll put the names right here too. So Freda Cervantes, and I'm so sorry if I butcher your guys' names. I really apologize for that. Ah! Laura Tomasoa is the second winner. And the third winner is Hi-Ho Matey 10. So that's Freda Cervantes, Lara Tomasoa, and Hi-Ho Matey 10. Congratulations, you guys are the three winners that have randomly been chosen for my 1K giveaway. So just make sure you email me at authorkristenmartin at gmail.com to claim your prize. You can pick whichever prize you want. So if all three of you want a $15 Amazon gift card, that's totally cool. You can choose whatever prize your little heart desires. I'm also planning on doing a 2K giveaway in the future with similar prizes. So if you're new to my channel or you're just stopping by, please subscribe. And in next week's video, or possibly the week after that, I will be announcing the July subscriber winner for the month. So stay tuned for that. And even if your name wasn't picked for the 1K giveaway prizes, you can still win a signed copy of the Alpha Drive via the Goodreads giveaway that is going on from today, Tuesday, August 9th through Tuesday, August 16th. I will leave the link in the description below. My debut novel, The Alpha Drive, is available for purchase on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, The Book Depository, and Books A Million. The sequel, The Order of Omega, is available for pre-order right now on Amazon, and it will be released on Tuesday, November 8th, 2016. All the links are listed below. If you have any questions or anything you'd like for me to talk about on my next videos, feel free to leave a comment down below or you can tweet at me at author Kristen M. You can also ask a question or post a comment anonymously on my Ask Me Anything page in Tumblr. Again, I will leave all of the links down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to win bookish goodies every month. I post new videos on Tuesdays. I will see you guys next time. Bye. There's a little teeny tiny spider. <laughs> that was loud. I killed it with my Quackalator. Silly spider. I don't like bugs. Ooh.